y'all not sick of this series, are you? Okay, well, this is the end of it, I believe. I believe. Amen. Hidden, look at somebody say, hidden hatred. That's why I have a Where's Waldo as the background. It's hidden hatred. Let me hurry up and get it off of here because we got some OCD folks that they won't make it through the rest of the service. I ain't going to call their names, but they know I know who they are. They ain't been looking for Waldo since I put it up. <laughs> Where's Muslims? Okay, I know who they are now. <laughs> Evelyn just got to leave. Uh, I just, I just have to leave. Because I think he might be under one of those words. I, I, have, I have to go. I can't not stay in here. <laughs> ah, hidden hatred. You know, when I met Sabatha, and let me tell y'all something. See, when I was... When I met Sabatha and I was, I was macking her, you know, because you, you, you have to mack. You just have to mack. <laughs> Look at somebody. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you, you, you have to mack. The courting process. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you what the courting process consists of. I'm not going to give you a lesson on mack. But let me tell you what. The courting process consists on you convincing the woman that she should be with you. Especially if she don't like you at first. What? The kid? Like, you don't like the kid? Now just do something. Now wait. No, no. Why? Why don't you? Well, I just... What? See, these young folk, they don't... They don't no, 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 no. It consists of you seeing who you like, who you want, and just making her yours. Amen. But you do it with love. You fall in love. Nobody's going to be a perfect match. You fall in love and fix that stuff. And if you're a man, you, you just make it happen. I mean, I'm not trying to sound, but it just is what it is. It's on you, man. So when I met my wife, you know, I didn't have much at all. I didn't have nothing at all. But I had the Mac. So I knew, I knew if I got her to fall in love with me, she wouldn't care about anything else. So that was my goal, to make her fall in love. So I didn't have, like, money to buy. I had to sell stuff to take her out. Really. I was selling stuff, my own stuff. I had a huge CD collection back then. I was selling my CDs every time I wanted to take her out. I just didn't have much. And then I found out what she liked. So I would go to the store and buy her these seek and finds. That's what she liked, the little, you know, seek and find where you find the words. Yeah, there wasn't no computers and stuff. So it's 59 cents, a dollar. But it, it meant more than that dollar to her. So I would show up and sometimes I would just put a whole lot of stuff. She liked certain candies or whatever. I'd put all the little candies she liked and get the little seek and find. And I would just give her that. What's wrong with these Negroes? They, they, they don't know. They don't know. They don't know. You don't know. I didn't have no money. But I knew I had to give her, I gave her what she liked. And the little became much. Oh, 30 years later. Now she can go get any seek and find. She can start a seek and find company if she wants to. Be the CEO. The Sabata Seeking Fire. Forget Waldo, find me. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, dude, you you overthinking it. All y'all. All y'all overthinking it. Everybody's single. You overthinking it. You are really overthinking it. It is not that complicated. The, the world society has made it that complicated. It's not that complicated. It's basic. It's basic nature what God created it's the first institution that God created that means that the work is done for you bro it's already done it's natural all you got to do is come with it oh I hope you recorded that I'm gonna charge for that that's going on a monetized site 
But yeah, that's what you have to do. You just, man. And women, you just let it happen. You can't do it. How many men? Just think about how many folk have you ran off because you was trying to do it. And if you do it in the court, you're going to do it all through the marriage. You sit back and just, man, if he worthy, he'll win you. And put up a roadblock or two. See what he does. And then you know if he's worth it. Yeah. Amen. You know, the Mac don't ever get old. It don't have an expiration date. Okay. Hidden hatred. Y'all found Waldo yet? <laughs> Look at all that dollar. I know she found it. If he's in there. All right. <laughs> Hidden hatred. AdamandBeliever.com forward slash don't take the hate. Five. Man, I have already preached. I have already preached. But let's get a little more in here. Amen. Do you know who you are? Look at somebody and say, do you know who you are? People that aren't self-aware scare me. I don't want to be around anyone who doesn't truly know themselves. I don't like the unpredictability of somebody that don't know themselves. I don't want to be around somebody that keeps reinventing themselves. I don't like the latest version and the upgrade and the firmware update. I don't like all that. I need you to be who you are. And I need you to know who you are. I need you to know who you're trying to be. Do you really know how you appear to others? I don't care what folks think, then you're going to live a miserable life. Do you really know how you appear to others? Now, we're not trying to satisfy haters. There's going to always be haters, especially if you look like you're going to do something. If you're worthy, if, if there's any value in you, devalued people are going to hate. And there's nothing you can do about that. I'm not talking about that, but you need to appear a certain way to others. You need to be a beneficial person. I can benefit from your company if I'm around you. Oh, the amen standing out. He was yelling with the Mac. <laughs> he didn't quiet on this part. Matthew 7 and 5. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shall thou see clearly to do what? In other words, quit looking at what's wrong with other folks and see yourself. <laughs> amen. Look at somebody and say, see yourself. See yourself. Make sure you're good. That's what this whole series has been about. Make sure you're good. Make sure that you're not going into these end time shenanigans with hatred in your heart. Because then you'll be easily manipulated. Amen. You'll believe everything that Fauci says. And we know he lies. It's important that we examine ourselves how often? Regularly. And make sure we are in the will of God and not, to, not acting out of hatred for ourselves and others. So every now and then you need to take an examination. Just do a, a self-test. Get you a piece of paper. Write down, who am I? And then start with your behaviors. How do I behave when I'm challenged with something? How do I behave when somebody talks about me? How do I behave when I'm down or depressed? What, what are my actions? It's a self-evaluation so you can see yourself. You gotta write it down so you can see yourself. That's one thing I hate about the digital age. The digital age stays virtual. So people don't ever really get a hold on anything. But when you write something down and read it back to yourself, you see something totally different. And you can type it in your notes on your phone, but it just looked different when you grab that pen and paper. For some reason, that paper does something. And you'll see yourself like a journal you wrote, and you look back a year at how you were talking, or two, three years, and you will really see what other people see. If you don't ever write it down, if you don't ever take a self-evaluation, you'll, really you'll never really see what other people see. 
And it's all about what other people see if we are to love our neighbor as ourselves. Oh, yeah. Now, I, I'm not going to preach the message that you shouldn't care about what nobody thinks and all of that. You should. A Christian, you have to have a witness. 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. So Paul is telling them, check yourself and just make sure you're saved. Examine yourself. I used to love the old school church, man. When, they, when, when communion would come, remember that? And the preacher would read and he would read it real creepy. Oh, it'd be scary. Let a man examine himself before he eat and drink. Remember that? He will surely die. For this cause, many are sick and many sleep. And then they would always say, sleep means dead. Just so you'll know, they ain't taking no nap. So as often as you do this, so it'd be 300 people, no, it'd be not that many. It'd be 100 people standing up. But then they get to that scripture, <laughs> 20. 20. And remember, the old mothers would pull you out the line. Oh, no, brother, you, you need to sit down. No, sister, look at your dress right now. You need to sit down. You take this communion wearing that, you will surely die. <laughs> Y'all didn't grow up like I did, boy. They, I mean, they were strict about that communion. Now, in the Baptist church, you could have a smoking gun in your pocket and take communion. They didn't care. We have enough for everyone. Because we believe everyone is saved. <laughs> I mean, you got a leg monitor and handcuffs. They have to give the communion to you. You can't reach up for it. <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> it's so funny because I played for all those churches. So, like, I, I remember, you know, my Pentecostal roots that I would be at the Methodist church and they would read the whole Catholic uh, they would do the whole Catholic communion, the mass. And I'd be sitting there like, you know, still got to play, get that check. <laughs> then I'd be in the Baptist church. Every, I mean, they'd be getting homeless people off the street to come take communion. Be, hey, we, we had some extra. We had some leftover. So the prostitute, after, hey, well, whoever's out there, y'all bring them in. <laughs> but the holiness church would always have more left. Always, because folks would do something Saturday and not qualify Sunday. <laughs> ah. So examine yourselves whether you are saved or in the faith. Prove your what? Examine yourself and show proof. So when you examine yourself and write it all down, you should be able to prove yourself saved. Uh-oh, see? No, 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 somebody. I mean, but salvation, you can't lose your salvation. This is one save, always say, and it's in my heart, and I can't just write it down and prove it. He's saying examine yourself and prove it. Yeah, you wouldn't be scared of this if you wasn't acting a fool. If you act insane, you're not scared of the test. Remember when you was in school, if you was prepared for the test, you ready to go. You was in there early. Teacher knew something was up. You must have studied this time. I'm ready. Because normally we got to go find you somewhere. Note from your mama. Oh, he don't have to take this test. Yeah. So if you're, if you're ready, if you're living right, if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you're not afraid to examine yourself to see if you're saved and to prove yourself. He said, know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you? So you don't know if you're saved? Now, I'm not talking about what the preacher said. And I'm not talking about the eternal security sermon you trying to live off on where you went and sat in the chair. You just came to join the church. You didn't know that it's going to make you get saved too. <laughs> I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about do you know? Look at somebody and say, do you know? Do you know, do you know if you're saved? Have you examined yourself? Whether you're in the faith. And have you proved it to you, to your own? I'm not telling you to prove it to me. I'm not in your business like that. Prove it to your own, look at somebody say your own self. Prove it to you. You the one need to know. Don't you want to know if you're going to hell? Hell is real. 
The Bible said so. Have a whole video on it. Part 12. Out of darkness. Just in case you have questions. Maybe you stumbled in here. Maybe your church was closed. You didn't have nowhere else to go. Well, we believe hell is real. Amen. And we believe that's where the sinners, the enemies of God, are going to go. Who are the enemies of God? The enemies of God are the folk that's not saved. You mean some are in church? Yeah, some are in church. Yeah. Just wait till this vax jump off. It's going to be a whole lot of folks that's the enemies of God. That's all they're doing is raising up a robotic enemy to fight Christ. Because nobody in their human mind is going to fight Jesus Christ when he returns. They have to have some kind of cybernetic cyborgism going on in their system. Controlled by some kind of machine. Some, something has to control them. Man, I'm preaching in here. Somebody, yeah, you better hear this message. Many times, hatred can creep up in our daily walk unnoticed. This is where it's dangerous. We believe that we are past certain things that hurt us, but these issues are still driving our decision making. So you thought you were past it. You thought you were good, but that little bit of hatred that is still in your heart is making you act out and do things that you shouldn't do. The worst part about bad decisions or decisions made by people that have hatred in their heart, one day you're going to get older. And when you get older, your resume is going to speak for you. All them bad decisions are going to add up. And you won't be able to hit a switch and change your reality. Yeah. And at that point, you're going to have to destroy everyone that looks better than you. Anyone you feel that made better choices and ended up in a better place than you, you're going to have to undermine to feel better because you got old and didn't change anything. You got old and didn't listen to the preach word. You got old and ignored God's voice. You got old doing what you wanted to do and it drove your decision making. Yeah, you sorry, but look at your life. Yeah, you want forgiveness, but look at your life. You got old like that. With a trail of dead bodies behind you. All because you wouldn't do what the word said. Hatred creeped up in you. So we have to check ourselves daily and ask God to check us for hatred. Make sure we don't hate anyone because it will change your decision making. Matthew 23 and 27. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like whited sculptures, which indeed appear beautiful outward. It's beautiful on the outside, but are within full of what? Dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. So you look good on the outside, but the inside you are dead. Hatred. You carried hatred around. Don't you understand that nobody is that important? I mean, well, I hate, I hate my wife. Ain't she that important? <laughs> Bruh, you, why do you hate her and call her wife in the same sentence? That means you're schizophrenic. <laughs> There's nothing I hate about my wife. We don't like each other all the time. Can I just be honest? I mean, it's just humans. Sometimes I do things that make her mad. That just aggravate her. And sometimes I catch it, but it's too late. <laughs> you know, I dropped a little stainless steel since Dr. Janine got us using these little stainless steel K-cups so we don't get the plastic in our system. Every now and then I might drop one in a dishwater. And I just forget, because I wouldn't mind if coffee grinds was floating in my dishwater. But for some reason... That's almost divorce level right there. <laughs> you got these coffee grinds in my... She hates that. So I catch it. <laughs> That's not my water. I didn't run it. I didn't prepare that sink. And so I rinse the grinds out. No. There's still a few. 
You can never get all the coffee grinds out, ever. Coffee grinds are like sand. You can't ever get it all out. And that just does something. And so I have to be, you know, so those moments. And then, you know, I'm the type, I start trying to ask questions to make sure everything's okay. That makes it worse, because she just gets quiet. I'm like, you ain't gonna, what you doing today? What, what, what you doing the rest of the day? Because <laughs> I know I done messed up, and I'm really sorry. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> and I can hear her like, it's almost like telepathy. When she's quiet, I can still hear her. I done made you breakfast. You in here early in the morning, I done made your breakfast. I, done, I mean, you didn't have to eat. I brought the breakfast to you in your chair. And you're gonna drop the coffee grind thing in my water. I can hear that without her saying it. <laughs> That's 30 years of marriage, I, I, can, I can hear it. Oh, but that don't change, that ain't no deal breaker. Coffee grinds? Oh, after an hour or two, she's fine. <laughs> <laughs> then she live in a house full of men so you know that's tough that's tough but it's not, not a deal breaker so you got to understand that you got to know you know how to I mean you can you can dislike or not you know you can but, but, but the love is going to keep it going amen if you truly love but you can't truly love with hate if hatred is in your heart, you'll jeopardize your own relationship. You'll begin to hate your own wife and husband. Because somebody did something to you. They're taking the fall for what someone else did. That's why you got to make sure it doesn't creep up in your heart. Amen? The Bible tells us that we are to work out our own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. Self-evaluation means that we must make sure our actions are not disrespecting the desire of God. So we got to work out our salvation. And this don't mean you have to be afraid that you're going to lose your salvation. You won't lose your salvation if you don't want to. Amen. Now, do I believe a person can lose it if they want to? You cannot tell me that the will that they use to choose it can't be used to unchoose it. It's will. <laughs> See, half the full clap because some of them want to be under that. Oh, no, bro. If it's will, if it's my will, if I'm the one that chooses. So that means that God is putting people in hell that didn't have a choice. Is God putting people in hell that don't have a choice? So then if we have a choice... It's our choice. So we either choose or we don't choose. Yeah, a lot of people get into faith and were once Christians and now they out there in the Hebrew stuff or the witchcraft or whatever. They ain't saved no more. Oh, but my name is written on the heavenly ledger. Well, if you believe that, then why are you a witch? This stuff don't make no sense. I'm sorry, y'all. That was created to fill up buildings. That was created to get members. We're not, we're not after members like that. Not, not enough to lie. We're not after members at all. Y'all chose to come here. It was your choice. Amen? We didn't work. We didn't, we didn't put a flyer on your car and go door to door and hand you a leaflet with my picture on it. And <laughs> we didn't do none of that. You chose to be here. It was your choice. And when you don't want to be here no more, guess what you can do? Choose to leave. Well, the same thing with Christ. You choose Christ, and then you can choose that you don't believe in Christ no more. And anybody that don't believe, when Jesus comes, you're not going. You're not going up there, and then God said, well, you, you know, you, you backslid and left, and you didn't want to be with us no more, and you didn't stop believing in us, but, you know, I love you so much, I'm going to let you pass. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Jesus is going to be very upset as a judge. Man, I went through all of that. All of that. And you're going to act like it didn't mean anything? Then you're going to choose the opposition and start serving the devil? And you want to come up here? 
The Bible said it's going to be weeping and wailing and what? Gnashing of teeth. Can I keep preaching in here? Yeah, I'd like the amplified version of this, Philippians 2 and 12, about work out your own salvation. It really brings it to life. Therefore, my dear ones, as ye have always obeyed my suggestion, so now, not only with the enthusiasm you would show in my presence, but much more because I'm absent. Work out, cultivate, or carry out uh, to the goal and fully complete your own salvation. Carry out to the goal and fully what? Complete your own salvation with reverence and awe and trembling, which is self-distrust with severe caution, tenderness of conscience, watchful against temptation, timidly shrinking from whatever might offend God and discredit the name of Christ. That is working out your own salvation. That means you are careful to not do the things to bring shame on Christ's name. But folks don't know how to act in their own family. That's why they don't know how to act in the body of Christ. They betray their own parents, betray their own brothers and sisters, can't get along with folks, hate folks, try to destroy folks. Then you can't, you, you can't love Christ right. That's hatred in their hearts. Can I keep preaching? God's desire is for us to love one another and not hate anyone, including ourselves. Look at somebody and say, don't hate yourself. God made you. He don't want you hating yourself. You don't discredit his creation. Amen? Fear and trembling are healthy indications of reverence for God and his desire. Ephesians 6 and 6, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of God from where? The heart. See, all this outer stuff, you saying it, and, oh, I came and I sat in the chair, so my name is on the roll. My name is in that, written on the scroll that they have in the back of the church. Oh, I'm in all the pictures that they have hanging up, and my name is on a brick outside that they used to build it. And, yeah, I bought a couple of chairs, all of that. I got a piece of the stained glass of the old church that they tore down to build this one. And so I know I am on my way, and God is judging the heart. Why did you do all that? Did you do all that so you can talk about it? Or do you really love the Lord? Well, I, I really love the Lord. Then why don't you love your brothers and sisters? Why don't you love others the way you love the Lord? Why aren't you even obedient to your own parent, teenager, if you love the Lord? Why are you fighting against the program in your own house if you love the Lord? If you love the Lord, why are you a Jezebel witch that won't Act right with your husband if you love the Lord. Why are you abusive, man, to your wife if you really love the Lord? All of that is doing the will of God. We cannot pretend to be Christians while fighting against one another. We can't expect to be blessed of God if we are harboring hatred toward others. John 13 and 35, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have what? How is everybody going to know you got your Christ's disciples? If you have what? Love one to another. Love. Oh, but I just don't like people though, you know. I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I'm an introvert. I kind of just, no, 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 no. You got to love people. You got to come out of that and love people. People are going to help protect you as a believer. They're going to balance you out because in your head is a bunch of cobwebs and crickets. None of your ideas have been good or you wouldn't be hiding in your head. You got to bring that stuff out and you got to love one another. And you got to pray to love people. Amen. Amen. When I came off the road of Truth Behind Hip Hop, man, I was done with the human race. I was Jonah. I'm done. I'm done with these folks. Then God said, well, no, you're not done because now you got a pastor. I was like, oh, Rio, bo, 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 bo. Beelzebub, get behind me. Sit down. Leave. That's the devil. I told my wife, that's the devil talking. And God's like, nope, you got a pastor, but I'm going to do surgery on you to make you like people. Because he understood why I didn't like him because I had been on the road, all of that, and most of that tenure, a lot of people were helped because they're still EX Ministry supporters now all over the world just because 
I did all of that, but a lot of the pastors, different ones, they just wanted the crowd. So they would bring me down and just use me to pack the building out. And, you know, I just got tired of getting used. I got tired of, you know, them getting up behind me when I leave. Okay, now we're going to eat the meat and spit out the bones. So we want the kids. Now you turn the hip-hop off, but we're going to keep the earth, wind, and fire playing. I, I got sick of that. I got sick of humans. I thought all pastors was corrupt. I said, Lord, I'm done. I just, I don't even want to be saved no more. Look at somebody, what? Yep, I just, I'm done. But these folk crazy. And Lord's like, no, you can't. First of all, you can't unfriend me. <laughs> you unfriend me, you're dead. <laughs> the only reason I let you survive all of that is because you're doing what I told you to do. Stop doing what I tell you to do, you're dead. Okay, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me for them thoughts. Look, see, folk don't like that kind of transparency. I went through all of that. You didn't have to do, you, you didn't have to deal with what I dealt with. You not see folk levitating and demons crump, scaling walls and all that kind of stuff that I saw. So I was like, all right, hey, this is just, this is unfixable. <laughs> this can't be fixed, <laughs> this problem is greater. <laughs> it just can't be fixed. But then God said, well, get in the word and find out what they did. And I began to get in the word, found out what they did. And God began to arrest my heart. He's like, you got, I got to get all the hatred out your heart. All the stuff that happened to you when you was young. All the stuff that these folks did to you. Everything, I got to get it all out your heart. And God had to just take me and perform surgery on me. Now, I'm in my 30s. And he had to do it. Now, I was 40 to prepare me for pastoring. So I could love people. Because my problem, was peop my problem with people was the way I felt. That's all it was. Because I love people now, so it had to be feeling. And God had to change the way I felt. And some of y'all, he has to change the way you feel. You get no. You can't stay like this. I go for you say, come out of that corner. Can't hide. You got to come out. You got to stop. You got to fix this. You're getting older. Don't you want to be married? Don't you want a family? Don't you want freedom in your family? Don't you want to get along with your husband, your wife? Don't you want your children to like you? See, folk thinks it's impossible for kids to grow up in a house and hate their parents. Let me tell you something as a, as a youth, former youth pastor. That's a very common thing, especially in the church. And you know they hate them because as soon as they get old enough, they shooting the deuces on God, church, religion, and everything. They grow up in the house with you and hate you for the decision you made because they think you made decisions to hurt them. And I'm just not doing that. I need God to fix that. If you're a kid, you need God to fix that. Because that hatred is only going to translate into self-hatred. Then you're going to go out and do something dumb. And make things worse. Just like Cain. Cain made things worse. Can I preach in here? I think I'm preaching. We can't expect to be blessed by God if we are harboring hatred toward others. John 13 and 35. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. The only way is if you do what? You got to love one another. When a person can see themselves the way God sees them, they can understand the cause and effect of their actions. God wants us to always be aware of our actions and their potential ramifications. Look at somebody and say, be self-aware. Self-aware means you know the damage you can cause. When you're getting ready to make a decision and you're self-aware, you understand the ramifications. 1 Corinthians 11 and 31, for if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. If you judge yourself before you do the fool, fool won't have to pay you back. Amen. And we know the fool is your greatest cheerleader when you're getting ready to do the fool. Should I do it? Ooh, 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 yes. I don't think I need to do that. What? Of course. 
fool. You need some friends and quit listening to the fool. <laughs> Understanding yourself keeps you from senselessly hurting others to feel better about your own error. Did y'all hear that? When you understand yourself, it'll keep you from hurting other people just because of the dumb stuff you've done. They talking about me. Really, who said that? I just, I just know it. I know who said it. Ooh, they talking about you. Ooh. I made it my, I tell people all the time when I'm counseling, I tell them all the time when I'm counseling and everything. I will never be mad because somebody said something. I'd never be mad about that. Yeah, like I'm not going to get mad because somebody said something. Some folks, you mad to the point of fighting because somebody came and told you, ooh, so-and-so said. That, that can never make me mad because they didn't say it to me. They didn't say it to me. If they, don't, if they didn't say it to you and somebody came and told you, do you know how messy that is? Do you know that's like sandbox playground messy? And then getting mad. They said what? Yeah, I heard. Now, they didn't tell me, but I heard they told somebody else that your dress is ugly. What? What? Really? And so I, I just, I just my rule. So when somebody come and tell me, yeah, man, somebody told me. I remember I was sitting at the table. Remember we was, at, we was in New York, Brooklyn. I'll never forget this. We was at a table. We was sitting at a table at this Jamaican restaurant with this pastor. Yeah, brother, well, somebody told me that you was homosexual. So I'm thinking, is he flirting or what? <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> Let me reach across this, this fried rice. <laughs> so I'm sitting there looking at my, and I, and I just asked him, I said, what am I supposed to do with that? Like, what answer are you expecting? I mean, I would just kind of say, you brought me down to preach. I just preached. Folks were saved, delivered and set free. Demons out. Thousands of folks. And this is the conversation you having over dinner? You messy little troll. Brother, forget my number, don't you ever, I ain't never talk to him again. I ain't never talking to you again. I mean, flew me down to ask me that? I'm messy. Dude, I'm a man. Men, we're not mess. Men, we don't sit around and, ooh, elder. And I heard it. I heard it. Men, men, gossiping, men, big old men, deep voice, hairy chest men, gossiping, ooh, Jeff, Brian, I know y'all work together, but Brian C. Gossip, men, it don't even sound right when it's a deep voice either, ooh. But if you understand yourself, you won't be hurting people to feel better about yourself. That's the only reason you gossiping. Person only gossips to feel better about themselves. There's some kind of shame or something that's happened to them to where they've devalued themselves a little bit. So talking someone else down gives them company. You need to catch yourself when you're doing it. Just catch yourself. Ooh. Yeah, I know. I'm only saying that because... I know I did the fool. And that's when God will say, yes, that's what I was waiting on. Now let me clean that out of you. Let me go to work. I just wanted you to admit it. How's God going to use anybody that's turned people down? Some of these churches that's closed need to stay closed. Pastor got issues. Up just hurting folks. And they wonder why the membership won't grow. Ain't nobody going to stand there and listen to that. You mad at something. It ain't got nothing to do with the church. You just mad. Y'all, in the name of Jesus, folk going to hell. Everybody. 
like, bruh. <laughs> Not everybody, but a lot of people. Can you use a scripture first? Good gracious. He just mad. He mad because his wife won't listen to him. He mad because his kids are running amok. And just take it out on the whole church. You can't do that. You got to get that hatred. You got to let God clean that out of your heart. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Ephesians 4. And, oh, if we fail to examine ourselves, our hearts will be blind to who we are being and how we are harming others. Listen to that. So if you don't examine yourself and let God clean you out, your heart will be blind. You won't even know you're a wrecking ball. Everybody else will, but you won't even know it. And you just like a wrecking ball, just destroying stuff. Because you haven't taken a self-evaluation. You're blind to how you're hurting people. I mean, destroying lives and just heart just tore up. Ephesians 4 and 18, having the, the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. They're having their understanding totally. Y'all know somebody whose understanding is just darkened? You try to explain and you can't explain. Their understanding is darkened. Just darkened. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. They're just ignorant. And they're alienated from God because of the what? Hearts blind. Blind. You can't even see yourself. And I've had people, I've sat around like, brother, look, you just got to take a good look at yourself or whatever. I mean, I, yo, what about you? I mean, you, you going to do it? Well, bro, you know, I'm just, you know, trying to help you through this issue, bro. You need to do it. I mean, you, you done done stuff too, though. You, right? Right? Ain't you done stuff? I mean, bye. I mean, what, what do you say? <laughs> Only God can go deep inside of us to reveal the why which can solve the problem and put us in a better place. Amen. Amen. How many of you was excited? And I know you heard it. EX Ministries or the church, ABC or something, revealed the why. Did that happen to anybody in here? The why. I mean, you got like the why. Why I'm like this. Like you took a self-evaluation, found out you was crap, and found out exactly why. Like why? This is why. This is why I'm angry. This is why I talk too much. This is why I gossip. This is why I'm a tattletale. Tat tattletale. Yeah. This is why. This is why. This is why I have these issues. This is why I don't like human beings. All of this stuff. This ministry has revealed that why. Because only God can do that. Amen. You couldn't do it or you wouldn't have needed to come here. You came here to get the why so you can fix the problem. Amen. Some folks can't, can't, can't take the why. When they get the why, the why goes against too much. And it's going to cause too much trouble or too much public change. And they feel like people going to think something so they don't deal with the why. Transparency and being open to this is a must for all believers. Psalms 26 and 2. Examine me, David said, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my what? My heart. So, hidden hatred. These are the things that hidden hatred does. And this is why we don't want this hidden in our hearts. First thing, it severely, it can severely damage God's product. How many of you are God's product? Amen. Do you belong to God? Yes. Did he make you? Yes. Did he create you? Yes. Is your life, breath, and everything coming from him? Y'all yes. believe that? Yes. Health issues can plague your body if you do not repent and turn from hatred of self and others. Amen. So you can severely damage God's product by having hidden hatred. You can severely damage your witness. Hatred can make you an enemy of God instead of a witness for him. Man, I wouldn't want to be no enemy of God. 
But hatred will make you an enemy of God. So many Christians have become harmful to others because they mismanage their hatred and never truly address it. Amen? Severely damage your discernment. Uh-oh. Yeah, see, as a believer, discernment is key. You will fill your own house up with demons if you don't have discernment. Amen. They'll be all in your cable box, in your Wi-Fi, on your phone, demons. All in your music, in your playlist, if you don't have discernment. People ask me, well, what can I listen to? Use discernment. You don't have Holy Ghost discernment to tell you what you don't need to listen to? But the Holy Ghost told me that Nicki Minaj was okay. And you don't have the Holy Ghost. You have a ghost. You definitely have a ghost, and you got a lot more now since you turned that witch on. I mean, some of these rappers will tell you that they ain't nothing but a bunch of skanks. I mean, that's the name of the song. I ain't nothing but a bunch of... <laughs> they said in the song, and you just dropping it like it's hot. Please don't. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. Keep holding it. Look, somebody say, hold on to it. Don't, don't drop it. Don't drop it. But you can severely, <laughs> you can severely damage your discernment. Hatred can even cause people to feel they are doing a work for God when they are lashing out at others. You really think you helping God by destroying people. You're insane. The Pharisees did this. That's where it comes from. The Pharisees. I mean, the Hebrew Israelites be on the street corner. Just, I mean, <laughs> full 100 with hatred. I mean, got white folks washing their feet, kissing their old pecan shell toenail. It's brown and rotten. <laughs> Just, and think they are doing the work for God. Think they are doing like God is just, uh, God is going to destroy all white people. God is God going to destroy all white people because you failed a drug test? God going to kill all the white Edomites because your child support went up. <laughs> Bro, I need you to take some responsibility for your actions. <laughs> Amen. You down on the street corner, quote scripture and cussing. Cussing and quoting scripture and smoking a blunt. Bro, and but working for the Lord. This is God's doing. They believe it's God. But these were the Pharisees. They were judgmental, callous, and they were so insensitive. Now, they had the word of God. They could, scroll, they could quote the scriptures in their favor. They could prove text. They knew the Bible backwards. They knew the law, the Torah, backwards and forwards. They spent all day reading it and rocking back and forth all day to, to memorize it. They knew it by memory. They knew the word. They were astute in the word, but they had hatred in their hearts. So they used the word as a weapon. And if you weaponize, do you know if you weaponize the word, you can kill anybody? Because nobody qualifies. Let me say that again. <laughs> if you weaponize, if you use the Bible as your venom, you can destroy everyone because no one is really worthy. Well, you don't have to clap. Yeah. So if you're just going to use the Bible to find out what's wrong with everybody, that's all the Pharisees did. And so when Jesus came, they did it to him. Wait a minute. <laughs> the word came and became flesh and walked among them. And they used the word to try to stop him. And used the word to justify killing him. The word. That's what anger does. That hatred in their hearts made them kill Jesus 
because they didn't recognize them. They didn't recognize them. They knew the word so well that they didn't recognize the word. Because they left out the love part. Yeah, all they saw was God destroying everything in the Old Testament, which he was destroying hybrid, hi, hybrid beings. They saw God killing. They saw all of that stuff, and they forgot the love. Well, no, that's when Jesus came. That's, that's just been said. No, 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 no. God forgave Adam and Eve. He forgave Cain. And he kept forgiving. He even gave old whack Ahab another chance. And Ahab deserved to be thrown under the bus. They had buses back then with stone wheels. Like the Flintstones. <laughs> chariot. They throw him under the chariot. And let many horses kick him in the head. And God forgave Ahab. Spared his life. So love was there. Can I? Well, y'all ought to really like this. So many today have allowed their hatred to dismantle their sensitivity to God altogether. And ain't nothing you can tell them. They're done. No sensitivity. It can severely damage your family. Hidden hatred. Hatred will break up your family. Thank you. Hatred will break up your family. Y'all arguing and about to divorce because the pancakes didn't have the crispy edges. I mean, what? Is that the argument? You are supposed to use the iron skillet. I'm tired of making pancakes for y'all. Then leave. I'm out of here. Now, you know that argument had nothing to do with them pancakes. Somebody. You was looking for her. To, you hid the iron skillet. <laughs> so, she, so she had to use the copper one. You set that up. <laughs> Hatred will break up your family, man. If it's down in you, it'll come out in the most un inopportune time. And it will just break your family up. Even while your family may be physically intact. So everybody could be there and your family be broken up. Your children will despise you and rebel in an attempt to distance themselves from your behavior. Huh. Hatred in parents always harms their children. Can I keep preaching in here? Y'all enjoying this? Hatred can severely damage a fellowship. A person that harbors self-hatred will hate others. This makes it impossible for them to keep friends good relationships, or valuable people in their lives. You, you don't have anybody valuable in your life. You ran them all off because you harbor self-hatred and it makes you hate other people. Makes you jealous of folks. When you harbor hatred, you devalue yourself. This makes anyone that has value to you a threat and an enemy of your own self-plight. Can I preach? Yes, Summary! <laughs> when was the last time you prayed for God to show you yourself? Oh, this can be a scary thing when you know that you have been doing the wrong things and treating people the wrong way. Yeah, God will show you your selfishness. He'll show you that all you think about is you every time you talk to me. It's about you. Every time you kneel down to pray, it's about you. You search the scriptures just to find blessings for you. Yeah, God will tell you. He will. When a ministry like ABC targets the hearts of people in this day, we get accused of being abusive, judgmental, or even tyrannical. That's us. That's you. You in here. But people today just can't handle being cut with the two-edged sword of the word because it cuts deep. It cuts deep. And this prayer, show me myself, cuts deep, man. You'll be very disappointed at what you thought. You really thought you were something. And God says, no, you're nothing. But let me make you something. But let's first deal with this hatred that you have because this is going to be a stumbling block for you for the rest of your life. This is going to ruin your marriage, your kids. This is going to ruin everything. This is going to ruin the gospel you preach. 
God won't be able to use you with this hatred in your heart. However, without our issues being dealt with, we can never experience true deliverance. It is the job of the pastor. Look at somebody and say, it's the pastor's job. It is the job of the pastor to use the word of God as a tool to bring deliverance and healing to the congregants. This is usually preceded by painful extraction. Woo! Painful extraction of habits, issues, and most importantly, what? Sin. So we come to church to get painfully, get these things painfully extracted off of us. It's hard to break a habit. That's painful. Old issues that you've grown up with, and then somebody shining a spotlight on them, that's painful. Right? And sin that you used to doing, sometimes you didn't know. You didn't know hatred in your heart was a sin. You felt like the cares of this life put that there, and I had a hard knock life. And I'm supposed to feel like this. Nope, that's sin. So when the, the preach word comes for all of this, it's painful. A true man of God can examine himself and others as God leads him to. People that harbor self-hatred or hatred of others cannot stand to be rebuked or reproved by God's authority. They desire to be an authority without the call and end up ruining many lives. You can't just decide to be an authority. The fruit is going to show whether or not you're an authority. That's what the Bible said. You will know them by their what? Fruit. Amen. Amen. In order to be free from self-hatred and not take on the hatred of others, we must allow God's process to commence. The painful extraction process. We must allow the preach word and the leadership of God's chosen to help us overcome our issues. We cannot blame our actions on demons and devils. We cannot wish for someone to cast out our behaviors. Your behaviors can't be cast out. We must pray for God to show us who we are and why we are behaving this way. The only way to truly get free from the bondage of self-hate, rage, wrath, envy, jealousy, and covetousness is to see it in our hearts and dislike it the way that God does. See? Amen. Thank you, sis. He shows it to you. And if you don't dislike it, you're not getting free. So once you tell him to open you up and show you yourself, and he shows you what's wrong, you have to dislike it like him. Once you dislike it like him, you'll stop. But there is always a reason why these things reside in us. And only God can show those things to us. Draw nigh to him and he will show you exactly who you are. Don't you want to know who you are? I just feel like I work for God, so I need to know who I am. So God, I, I have to pray this prayer. Examine me, show me if I'm mistreating anybody, if I'm saying it wrong, whatever. I need to know because I work for you, I need to represent you well. I don't want to get fired. I like this job. <laughs> Amen. So I want to make sure I'm good. Don't fire me, Lord. Like David said, don't take your spirit away from me, but uphold me. Amen? There's always a reason. Draw nigh to him and he will show you exactly who you are. Trusting in him and his word will reveal the answers you seek. But remember, look at somebody say, but remember. Ah, 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 ah. The answer may come. From a source you have turned away because of your insecurities and hatred issues. That's the problem. God gave you the answer, set you up to get it fixed. And you done turned on the person that had the answer. Because of your own insecurities and hatred issues. The first step in understanding who you are is to forgive and love others so they can help. Amen. James 1 and 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, 
and slow to get upset. I could end it right there. Swift to hear. Are you listening? Slow to speak. Shut up. Can't listen and talk. Remember the teacher taught you that in first grade. Now y'all be quiet because you can't learn and talk. So hush, swift to hear, slow to speak, and the most important one, slow to get mad. Because people that get angry quick, their lives are ruined. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to what? Save your soul. If you're not meek and can't control yourself or control your anger, your wrath, and all of that, then you can't receive the engrafted word. How many of you had to force yourself to come to church when, 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 when the message was about you and something you had to change and you, 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 yeah, you had to just go on and be in here? How many of you had to force yourself not to raise that finger up and banish? Excuse me, just or go over the whole aisle. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, you gotta force yourself to stay in here. Word was whipping your tail. Yeah, but you have to be slow to wrath. Sit there and take it because you knew it was good for you. And you knew it was able to save your soul. Amen. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. So don't just come in here and hear, but you have to do. Because if you're here only, you deceive your own self. For if any man be a hearer of the word and not do what he's hearing, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a mirror. You see yourself in the mirror. You see yourself. Then you go your way and forget what you saw. You don't remember what was wrong with you. So you go right back out hurting people and hurting yourself. That's a person that's a hearer only. But if you're a doer of the word, you will do what the word is saying. You will change things. When God shows you yourself, you won't be afraid to change it. And you won't be afraid. Who knows that you changed it? That's just something I'm working on, bro. Yeah. I mean, bro, you used to just fly off the handle and go crazy. I'm working on that. I ain't like that no more. I'm tempering myself, man. I know that if I stay like that, I'm going to make some bad decisions. I'm a, I'm, I got tired of apologizing. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be what? Blessed in his deed. Everyone stand to your feet. Amen. Oh, I love the word. Isn't that what you come for? Yeah. I mean, the music is good, but I come for the word. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So we want to make sure that God sees and tells us who we are. Y'all afraid of that? Anybody afraid of knowing who they really are? You know, if God don't tell you, life will. <laughs> I wish you could read all the letters we get in here in the office of the people in prison and on lockdown that want DVDs or want, you know, uh, books or whatever they want. And we have, you know, we send them whatever they want. But man, they in lockdown wishing they hadn't done something. Wishing they had listened when somebody was telling them the truth. Wishing they had really paid attention and not done the deed that they did. Yeah. Because man, if you don't get this together and get this hatred out your heart, you're going to make a decision that you're going to regret. And some decisions can't be reversed. You can get saved, but you're still in jail. You can get saved, but your wife's still gone. You can get saved, but your kids hate you. You can get saved, and you have messed stuff up. So you want to make from this day forward, you want to make the right choice. So you need God to show you exactly what you are dealing with. Is that all right? If you want me to pray for you, come on up for that. God, show me me. That examination process, I needed to start because there's some things that's happening in my life and some things that keep happening and some behaviors that keep coming up 
and I need to know where they're coming from, and I need to know why they're coming, and I need to be free from it. So come on, whoever it is, praise God. Praise God. Let the word do what the word is supposed to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just come on up. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a blessing it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. God has unified us as a church and a body. These are our brothers and sisters. We love each other. So we all want God to show us what we need to see. So we don't hurt nobody in here. So we just don't go off on a selfish tangent and, and mess stuff up. We want to be right. We don't want to make a decision with regret. We don't want to be sitting out there mad because we did the wrong thing. We want to make the right choices. Amen? So with your heads bowed all over this building, Father God, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you for this message. Thank you for this series. Thank you, Father God, for this series that have put things in perspective for some of us, forcing us to deal with some things that we have neglected for many, many years. Father God, those things that make us lash out at leadership, lash out at people when they begin to get close to the issues, Father God, that we are harboring, when they begin to get close to the feelings we have, the hatred in our hearts, whatever it is, Father God, we thank you for this word that has come and brought us front and center before you. And God, right now, we just ask that you forgive us. Forgive us of our sin of self-hatred. Forgive us of our sin of hatred for others. Forgive us for hating God. Forgive us for allowing, for even using you to hate other people, God, and using the word to tear down people. And Father God, twisting scripture, God, to justify how we feel. And Father God, just listening to the enemy and letting him convince us that we need to say and do certain things when we shouldn't. Father God, we come before you right now, just transparent, knowing that you already see, but you want us to confess it. So we confess it right now. Forgive us, God, for the hatred. Forgive us for the bitterness. Father God, forgive us for the jealousy. Forgive us for the envy. Father God, forgive us, Lord, for the malice where we maliciously attacked others. Forgive us for the murder where we killed and destroyed others with our tongues and our words or information that we may have had on somebody, whatever the case. Forgive us for murder, God. Forgive us, Lord, for even justifying it with the word. And God, just forgive us, Lord, for being sinners. Many of these things we didn't even know we were carrying, but it, our behavior reflected. Our behavior reflects it. So God, show us ourselves right now. God, show us ourselves right now. Father God, just show us what we need to work on. Show us what needs to be fixed. Show us why we do the things we do. Show us why we talk the way we talk. Show us, Father God, where we tear down, why we tear down others. Show us, God, why we are insecure, what we're hiding. Father God, what we don't want others to see. Show us ourselves, Lord. Show us so that it can be fixed, so that it can be dealt with, so our heart can be right. Father God, so that in this wicked hour of our world's history, we will be on the right side. Show us, Father God, what needs to be done inside of us and do the work. We're not afraid of it. Do the work. Come on, lift your hands all over the building. Do the work. Just ask him. Come on. Do the work, Lord, in my heart, in my mind, in my family, in my children. Father God, in my marriage. Father God, on my job, wherever, do the work. Keep me, Father God, as an encourager so I won't be the one tearing people down, ruining lives. Do the work, Lord, that I will speak life. I will speak love. I will speak encouragement. I will be the one, Father God, that makes things better when I walk in the room. Do the work, Lord, that I will be a true Christian. A true believer standing firm on your word. Father God, I won't let anyone sway me in this hour. Do the work, Lord. Do the work in my heart. Go deep into my heart. Take the reins of my heart. Father God, go deep into the place that I've hidden from everyone. 
go deep into the place, God, where I was severely wounded, where someone took my life from me. Go deep into that place and put life back in there. God, I want you to live there. Father God, and we come against all torment in the name of Jesus. All torment. The spirit that comes to torment. Father God, the spirit that comes to torment us because of mistakes. Torment us because of issues. Torment us because of a bad childhood. Torment us because of loneliness. Torment us, Father God, because of bad decisions. Father God, areas where there was neglect. We come against tormentors right now. Every spirit that will come to torment and remind us of who we used to be. We come against that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. God, deliver us from torment. Deliver us, Father, from all evil. Fill us with your Holy Ghost. Reside in every part of our heart. Reside in every part of our mind. Reside in us, Lord. We open ourselves up for you to clean us out and live within us. Every place, God. Every place. Every place. The place where smoking covered. The place where drinking covered. The place where lust and perversion, pornography, whatever it was. Free us, God, and take that place and reside in us, Lord. And we'll be your children, we'll be your servants, and we'll live for you, Lord. In the name that is above every name, we believe and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Now come on, hug somebody and tell them hate can't hide in me. Come on, say hate can't hide in me. All hate must go. Come on, look at him say, I don't hate anyone, but I love everyone with the love of the Lord. All hate must go. Hallelujah. 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 I love my children. I love my wife. Come on, tell them I love my husband. I love my family. I love everybody. Whoever violated me, I love them too. I won't carry their hate. They made the mistake, but I'm not the mistake. Come on, tell yourself, I'm not the mistake. They made the mistake, but that's not me. I won't carry their hate. I won't carry it. I won't carry it. I won't carry it. Come on, look at somebody and say, I won't carry it. But I'm delivered from hate. No more hate in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.